Transition Awareness Breathing. Feeling grounded for both children and parents is essential for healthy living and learning. Join Earth Apollo on this series for tips and tools for creating a harmonious environment for learning. Transition Awareness Breathing will help you and your child find an individualized path to tackle change, promote lifelong learning, and discover new approaches to calmness. Hi, everyone. This is Eartha, and welcome to Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. Uh, Today, I'd like to explore um, a new topic with you all, if you would just join me with a little bit of a conversation this time. Uh, If you have children in school or know of anybody in school, you know that this time, a lot of interim reports are coming home or being emailed to you. Just to give an idea of how uh, children are doing in their studies. I like to think of it as a time to see what's working and what's not working and a time to readjust, to reassess. As I am in that mindset of readjusting and reassessing, you know, during our social uh, current events, there has been a lot of major changes going on. And uh, may I say that a lot of um response to those events if i had to give a interim report uh could stand a lot of improvement and i have to say to i have to admit as someone who is uh sharing information about mindfulness awareness and relaxation breathing um when i see a lot of uh reactive um, comments from the news or rea- or the social media, I I often uh, say to myself, um, you know, that could have been said a whole lot differently, or maybe um, nothing could have been said. And so I, a lot of times, I use um, some of that uh, information as data, data to observe and to. Um, uh, validate information that I am learning about mindfulness and relaxation breathing and awareness. And it just seems like uh, I would just like to share and just get the whole world uh, involved with mindfulness one step at a time. You know, we have to... Uh, deal with one step at a time. So I'd like to thank you for joining me in my world and um, being open to learning and practicing mindfulness, relaxation, breathing, and awareness. Before I continue, I would like to thank Web Talk Radio for allowing me to have a platform to share Transition Awareness Breathing podcast with you. And thank you to my producers, Mary Lou and Sam, for making Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast available to you wherever you go. Okay, so let's see what's going on in our report. As I was doing research for our topic, I'm going to, I realized that the the topic that I'm going to share is way too big. There's so much information. So I have to narrow things down. You know, the the, when information is too broad, I I just have to uh, focus and say, okay, what do I really want to focus on here? I would like to, in a general broad uh, spectrum, address what does negativity, what is the impact of negativity in our environment? Okay, that sounds really broad. Because on the opposite side, what is, or I'm sorry, how does positivity impact our environment? That's really broad. That's where I, that's where I started. Okay. So as I was researching and I, all this stuff is, is just peeling, just like the onion that, you know, it's just layers and layers and layers. I narrowed my topic down for today. (laughs) 
did you know that there is something called a world happiness ranking? So I got this article. It was published on uh, March the 19th, 2022. And its uh, author is Jennifer Liu. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Um, in her article, she brings out that according to the 10th Annual World Happiness Report, um, which is published by the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network. Well, uh, that is a long name for a group. But anyway, it pointed out that in this happiness ranking report, and this is year 10 of this report being published, the United States is now ranked as the 16th happiest country in the world. And it points out that um, lagging just behind is Ireland, Germany, and Canada. So it also it points out that um, that this is a three spot gain from uh, last year when the United States was ninth, the nineteenth happiest country um, in the world. So it says the uh, United States now ranks above countries such as the United Kingdom, Czechia, Belgium, and France, as far as um, on the happiness metric. You may be curious to want to know, well, who is number one? What country is number one on the happiness report card? Um, researchers have noted that Finland has been number one for the past five years on the world happiness ranking. And, you know, the, the article is posed in a very optimistic point of view because it says, but the United States is gaining ground. So Finland, which is number one, and United States, which is number 16, we see that there is a disparity. And in that gap, there's room for growth. Okay, so this is good to know. Now, so what are the other countries? Who's behind Finland? You know, if you're into, okay, Finland's number one, who's next? Okay, so um, according to this report, Denmark, Iceland, Switzerland, and the Netherlands are among the top five in that order, who ranked high on the Happiness World Report. I think, in my humble opinion, that the disparity that is shown means that there is opportunity for the United States to grow even more. And looking at the uh, or comparing the results from a year ago, um, moving from number 19 on the happiness ranking to now number uh, 16 uh, is heading in the right direction. Just like, if I can um, mention, when we look at an interim report from our children's report card or our interim report, um, we look at and reevaluate what's being done well and um, and uh, what we need to improve on. And so if I use that type of mindset and methodology, um, I invite you to join me in these next few podcasts as Transition Awareness Breathing, little old me, and you <laughs> come up with an interim report and an action plan to help 
the United States closed the gap in our in that uh, help, happiness report. That's a big goal, but you know we can make an impact in our part of the world, wherever you're at, wherever I'm at, and then we share the information with others, and we can make it a big impact. So why is this so important? Uh, you know, we all can't move to Finland. That would be unrealistic. But how about if we look at Finland and see what are they doing which is resulting in in that country that country's rating as number 1 for on the happiness ranking scale for 5 years so let's look at our awareness of our point of view where are we um looking at this information from i'm looking at the information from the point of view as a health professional, as a nurse, as a mindfulness facilitator, as uh, a a person, just a human being who really um, can see that many of us, everyone, if I can say, um, has the ability and capability to bring out more positivity in their world, knowing that there are a lot of distractors in our world. Um, Oftentimes, these distractors are not seen if you are not aware. In many professions, and uh, certainly in the medical profession, I'm I'm a nurse, so I'm going to speak to my profession, but in your profession, maybe kind of think about this. In, In many professions, there is the process of benchmarking. And, you know, you want to improve your service or your product. And so you look at another uh, industry or another health care system and see what they're doing right. Or you look at the research and see what's out there and, and then come up with plans and come up with teams to increase the um, productivity or improve the services or systems and uh, come up with a plan to in- improve. And so what about if we did something similar and used Finland as a benchmark? That's a thought. There is a professor in the University of British Columbia. His name is Professor John Halliwell. And uh, he helped edit the report for the happiness um, the World Happiness Ranking Scale. And what he noted was a remarkable world growth in three acts. The act of um, helping strangers, of volunteering, and making donations. And he summarized these as acts of kindness. And um, What he pointed out in his report was that there was, in these three um, actions, there was a 25% increase in 2021. And this was compared to the pre-pandemic times. So there was, so here we have a 25% increase in helping strangers making donations, and volunteering. I think we have stumbled on something that may help us close the gap. Wow, we have covered a lot today, and we're just getting started. Come back again next time as we continue to map out, to work out, and to lay plans for an interim report of how to improve the world happiness ranking in our sphere of the world. Thank you so much for joining me and being patient. 